Okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, start the introduction. So this book is called Let It Burn. It's by David Benjamin, and it's available at ChristiansNeedTheGospel.com, which I highly recommend people uh, take a look at because it has a lot of good resources on there and tools for um, the church. Okay, so go ahead and get through all this. <laughs> Okay, so introduction. Visible Christianity today is marked by negative trends that often discourage genuine Bible believers. Many find themselves alienated from small groups and churches due to subtle control mechanisms designed to weed out those who are deeply committed to the Word of God. This engineering often leaves believers feeling confused, isolated, and questioning their own faith. Amen. The truth is, these environments are being manipulated to drive out those who genuinely seek to follow Christ, making it difficult to find true fellowship and rest in these settings. The heart cries, or excuse me, the heart cry of many believers mirrors the seeker in the Song of Songs who asks, Tell me, O thou whom my soul loves, where, where thou feedest, where thou makes thy flock to rest at noon. For why should I be as one that turns aside by the flocks of the companions? Song, Song of Solomon 1.7 This seeker, symbolic of the church, longs for genuine fellowship and rest in the presence of the true shepherd, Jesus Christ. However, they find themselves continually turned aside in flocks led by companions of the shepherd who often mis excuse me, misguide and lead away from the shepherd. In fact, when we are in these flocks, we feel that we are veiled and we cannot see our shepherd and the teaching of his companions actually turns us away from the one we seek. The cry in the Song of Songs reflects a deep yearning of Christ himself. The seeker yearns for his rest, his shepherding, and his nourishment, which seems increasingly hard to find within the institutional church system. Amen. In Matthew 13, Jesus provides a series of parables that present a negative picture of how the kingdom would appear in this age. These parables outline the course the kingdom would take during the age of mystery from when he sowed himself as the seed until his return. According to Jesus, the key to understanding this collection of parables is identifying the meaning, the meanings in the first one, the parable of the sower, which he interpreted for the disciples in all three of the symbolic, or excuse me, in the synoptic gospels. The negative elements that are developed in the subsequent parables seem to have their origin in the events surrounding the first soil in the parable of the sower. Matthew 13, 4. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Jesus interpreted this for us. Matthew thirteen nineteen. When anyone hears the word of, of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart, which is, excuse me, this is he which received seed by the wayside. You got to give me uh, some room here, guys, because it's been a long time since I've read out loud, so I'll, I'll get better, I promise. Um, I've been practicing on my husband. <laughs> Mark 4, 14 through uh, 15. The sower sowed the work, or the word, and these are they by the by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Many believers are familiar with the parable of the sower, but contrary to popular understanding, it does not tell the story of salvation or even the growth of an individual Christian, but rather the reception of the good seed, the word of the kingdom, and the opposition it would face, as well as the path it would take to, to fruitfulness in patient hearts. 
This parable shows us that the fruit of the kingdom is the work of the word sown by the Son of Man. Amen. In his interpretation, Jesus tells us that the seed the sower sows is the word of the kingdom. It is sown by Christ himself, the Son of Man. Matthew 13, 37. Paul said that the word is come unto you as it is in all the world and brings forth fruit as it does also in you since the day you heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. Amen. Colossians 1, 6. The working principle of the kingdom is the word. It is also the, the focus of attack from the kingdom of darkness. The birds represent Satan and agents of his kingdom, whether angelic of human that work against the purposes of God. They are there stealing the word of the kingdom from they are there stealing the word of the kingdom from those who do not understand. These birds are important because they show up again in the parable of the mustard seed that becomes the great tree whose branches fill the earth. The birds are lodged in these branches. Contextually, these birds are a negative and oppositional element to the word of God. Remember, when the word of the Lord appeared to Abraham in Genesis 15, from which we get our doctrine of justification, God was preparing to cut the covenant with Christ, the seed that was to be promised, represented by the torch that passed through the pieces of the sacrifice with the oven as Abraham slept. The word told Abraham to prepare the sacrifice, and as he arranged the pieces of the animals, the scripture says he had to chase the fowl of the air away. Genesis fifteen eleven. This is mentioned in the context of the confirmation of the covenant that the gospel of the kingdom is based on which promised on, on which promised Christ. The seed of Abraham and the fowl represent the satanic opposition thereto. The word meets resistance and is the object of spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is not about chasing demons around some charismatic church auditorium or rebuking the devil whom you, whom you fear is shaking the windows and blinking the lights. The spirit. Uh, spiritual warfare is about the progress of the word of the kingdom. The word faces fierce opposition. According to the parable of the sower, it faces opposition within believers, as indicated by the soil representing the hearts of men, occupied with cares and anxieties, Matthew thirteen twenty two, or shrinking back when persecution comes, Matthew thirteen twenty one. It also faces resistance in the world, where it is sown on many hearts that do not believe. These hearts are represented by the first soil, the soil by the wayside. According to Jesus, this soil does not really receive the seed at all. But there are birds that come and steal the seed that is sown immediately and trampled, or excuse me, and trample and devour it. Later, Jesus explains that these birds represent Satan, who steals the word of the kingdom when it is not understood. Matthew thirteen nineteen. Here in Matthew, the birds are said to be the wicked one. One is in italics, meaning it is not in Greek, and wicked can be understood to be plural. Most Bible scholars have said that this is Satan and his angels, and I believe it also includes false teachers and false ministers. Amen. When we consider all the parables together, we see that Satan not only steals the word, but also replaces it with something false. After the parable of the sower, we have the parable of the tares and the wheat. Jesus tells us that the field is the world. And the wheat consists of those who have received the good seed of the word of God. However, there are also the tares. The tares are not the unbelieving world in general, but consist of those who thought they received the word of the kingdom, 
but did not understand it. According to the first parable, Satan and his angels have taken this seed out of their hearts, which they did not understand. However, according to this second parable, Satan has sown another seed, a counterfeit of the gospel, which seems to produce something that looks just like wheat, but is in fact a tear. The tares consist of those who initially had the word stolen from them. They are deceived and instead have received another word, looking very similar to the first, and they believe that this is the true gospel. They believe they still possess the gospel, and it looks very similar. However, it is a leavened version, altered subtly to retain the outward form, though stripped of saving power and filled instead with Satan's poison. Amen.